Um, there was a question from Susan about what did risk refer to, and I'm mm -hmm. assuming it was my first slide. Um, and in that case, it was environmental risk. Um, so what mostly, <coughs> excuse me, based on the impact to the environment. And then there was a question from David about peanut hulls being used as um, a carbon source. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they're wonderful. We just don't have them here. So that's why they weren't in our slide, so, in our slides. But yeah, yeah whatever's available, that's basically what we talk about. We do like to make sure, though, that the base has those properties um, of being relatively dry and having relatively large surface area um, and good structure to be able to hold the weight of, um, uh, of a carcass without, you know, compacting and, and enough that when it absorbs moisture, it doesn't also take up all the airspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we conducted our uh, Rocky Mountain Corridor survey, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, um, looking at how people were applying mortality composting, we found a variety of interesting crop residues and alternative carbon sources, um, <laughs> one of which being um, chili pulp and chili skins from New nice. Mexico as um, something more for the core um, not for that base where you do want some structure to encourage um, support and passive aeration. Right. So a variety of um, a variety of sources may be relevant and useful across many different regions. Well, uh, Tim, this is Tommy. I had a question. Uh, I'm curious um, with your your pretty fascinating results. If you have gotten any feedback from a regulatory agency such as Environment Canada or a public health agency um, or, or anybody that might, in the end, influence policy related to mortality composting and these pathogens you've studied? Um, right now, we are um, in discussion with uh, CFIA in Canada. And they drafting a new white paper, maybe to change the regulation for SRM disposal, mm -hmm. because uh, in North America it is a problem how to deal with all this SRM after slaughtering, and maybe in the long run uh, our results, which have been recently published, might lead into a change of the policies, and then uh, SRM might be uh, able to be composted and then uh, put into landfill, which is a uh, very safe way to deal with those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to remind everybody, the SRM were those categories of tissues, uh, primarily nervous, but was it also small intestine, um, where some of these pathogens would, of course, uh, per persist. Uh, Josh, would you like to make any comments on some of your ideas for future research? I see some of the questions coming in have reflected that area. Well, yeah, you know, I, I think looking at other factors that are capable of degrading sodium pentobarbital could be an area that we uh, conduct future research in. There, there's just very limited research in this area, and especially on the, the factors capable of degrading of degrading the drug. So um, I'd like to see some more conducted there. Um, a challenge is finding funding in this. Uh, and Tommy knows exactly what I'm talking about. We co-authored a proposal to uh, uh, chase some funding on, on this very project. And um, there's just not really any out there that I'm currently aware of. I think it has to be internally funded. And uh, looking at uh, analyzing the, these drug levels is a very expensive process. So um, I'd like to see more done. I, I think our biggest challenge from, from this end will be finding that funding. But I, I would say that I have received interest from, with our Oklahoma Ag Disease Diagnostic Lab located on campus of uh, exploring composting for some of their necropsied livestock that they receive there. So with that interest, uh, we're going to explore it and Maybe we can fund our own study um, within OSU. Great. Um, Mary, would you like to um, 
uh, clarify or verbalize some of the discussion going on to the left uh, in the chat box regarding Cornell yeah, sure. study? So, so uh, our study was actually over two years, and in the first year we um, we actually dissected the horse before we put it in the pile and took liver samples to cut up the liver. Um, well, first we put the animal down, and then we cut up the liver um, before actually covering it in the pile, and we put the liver back in containers in the wiffle balls and back inside the body cavity of the horse. So we actually measured a time zero liver pentobarbital uh, concentration in the liver and then pulled liver samples out of the horse um, within that time period, you know, over that time period. And, and we did see exponential decay of um, pentobarbital in the liver. Um, we also buried some samples in about three feet of loose soil. We actually saw it, the, the concentration decrease more quickly in the soil than inside the horse. Um, and a difference there is it was inside the horse and not actually in the compost. You know how we, I talked about how it's not really, I mean the horse decays and then it becomes part of the compost, but in the beginning it's sort of just the horse and the rest of the material around the horse. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, other than the fact that the horse wasn't alive anymore, it really probably more mimicked anaerobic decay inside the horse, um, aerobic decay in the soil, and there's been some work done in Tennessee with um, looking for the microorganisms that actually will uh, decay or degrade pentobarbital, and they, uh, there are a couple of soil microorganisms that do that. Um, so, so our results were a little bit different than Josh's, especially in that first year because we measured liver. Um, but in the ones, <coughs> excuse me, that Josh said we spread around the whole compost pile, and yes, we we pulled some from underneath legs rather than just necessarily under the center of the horse. Um, when you look at those in comparison to zero, when you the the values that we got. Um, they weren't any different, so that would indicate to me, and they were much different than than the dosage that was given to the animal. So that would indicate to me that there is something, some, you know, degradation going on, um, at least in ours. And it could, like just just said, be a difference between the type of wood chips we used, what came out in the leachate, um, you know, and and maybe how much it degraded inside the horse prior to or how fast the horse degraded and then, you know, mingled with the, with the wood chips. It's, it's so hard to say because there just isn't enough data at this point. Sure, sure. Well, th thank you for that explanation.